What's up guys, welcome back to Golf Simulator Videos. We're here today with a pretty cool video after actually taking like three or four weeks off to kind of focus on some outdoor golf, you know, spend some time with the family. Uh, during that time, I have had so many emails coming in about the Garmin R10 launch monitor, all right? Actually, uh, specifically the Garmin Approach R10 is actually the name that Garmin uses, but this portable golf launch monitor is radar-based, and I've had so many people emailing me about it, and that's what we're here to talk about today. I actually have some very interesting information that it sounds like a lot of people uh, are not aware of, and they've asked me to do a video covering all this. I've had a lot of people say, you know, you really need to share this with everybody out there. And so that's what we're here doing today and kind of asking that question, should you buy the Garmin R10 golf launch monitor? Let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, so let's just first start off talking a little bit about the Garmin Approach R10. It has an MSRP of only $599. Uh, they state that it is up to 10 hours of battery life, which means more time on the range, okay? Now, that's an interesting uh, you know, word that they use there because you know this is also stated to be an indoor device, all right? But right on the next line, it says, virtual rounds let you play any course without, without leaving uh, the house, all right? So, it basically, you know, allows you to use the Garmin app. They're using their GPS information and mapping, uh, you know, graphics to where you can select, I believe it's like hundreds of thousands of courses and kind of do a uh, shot by shot on the Garmin app. All right. Kind of showing it there on the screen so you guys understand what that is. Pretty cool. But the one that actually really grabbed a lot of people's attention was the ability to hook up to TrueGolf E6 Connect golf simulator software. All right, at $599, this would be one of the lowest, if not, I believe the lowest launch monitor, um, you know, to connect as far as using like real golf balls and, you know, real clubs and everything else and allow you to play in a golf simulator. All right, so uh, really caught a lot of people's attention. But there's a lot that you guys need to understand about this device, all right? So, so many people have emailed me and, you know, just didn't pick up on some of the things, you know, and it's not their fault because, a lot, honestly, all this data that I'm gonna share with you today is not on the main page. I actually found this in the Garmin support documentation. So it's cool that they're publishing it, but it's a little hidden away from the prospective buyer. So obviously from all the emails and suggestions from people, that's why we're making the video to share it all with you. So um, let's talk a little bit about the setup before I really dive into what's measured by the radar and what's calculated and talk a little bit about the feedback that users that own the device, you know, have given me and, you know, why we kind of haven't shown the device here yet in the channel. All right, we're going to cover all that stuff, so stay tuned. Setup uh, needs to be six to eight feet unit to ball. I'm assuming that the eight feet is going to have, you know, give you a little more of a preferred amount of space for the unit to get its best ability to read the ball. Um, and then eight feet ball to screen or net. Okay, so those are the setup requirements kind of, you know, focusing as far as indoor goes. Outdoor, it's going to be the same six to eight feet, but then you're going to have have that unlimited flight to give the radar more time to actually read the ball. Just so you guys understand, if we have anybody that's just entering the space, um, the two main uh, types of units that you have for golf launch monitors or you know simulators, if you will, um, are radar based or camera based, you know, photo metrics. So you either have a camera or multiple cameras that are reading the ball and reading the club, or you have radar, okay, which actually tracks movement, kind of looks almost like a blob, if you will, um, is a different type of tracking, okay? So just so you understand, this is a radar based unit, all right? So um, the T location needs to be aligned, but can be moved up to a foot on either side of the target line. So actually include this little alignment stick. You're gonna align the radar to your target line, or maybe it's the center of your screen, whatever you have going on and then you have kind of a two by two hitting area from there all right so I wanted you guys to understand all that now here's an interesting statement I'm gonna read this right off of this support documentation that I found um, that way you guys can kind of understand what terminology they're using and you know description they're using and then we'll go over this measured by the radar data and then calculated by their algorithm, all right, Garmin's algorithm. Um, unfortunately, obviously, people wouldn't have access to the algorithm. They're not trying to share that, so um, nobody at this this stage, you know, knows what of these data points are being used in that algorithm to calculate all of the data that you're you're seeing for your end results. So let's go ahead and read this off. The Approach R10 uses radar to analyze several metrics like your club path, launch angle, 
ball speed, and estimated distances and direction. It does not use GPS, but based on its placement to the ground, it will be able to provide shot data without GPS data or elevation information. The accuracy for the radar metrics are outlined below. All right, now understand something. It's providing more data than I actually have here under the measured and calculated columns, okay, which I found a little bit interesting, especially that they mention club path. And I guess club path is, you know, one of the important metrics that they're using to calculate this data. It's not under the measured or the calculated section. So I thought that was interesting. I mean, maybe it's being read but not measured. I'm not sure, Garmin might have to fill us in on that, but I want you guys to be aware of this. And you know, this, this is something when I started sharing it with people that were reaching out, they were like, oh my gosh, I didn't know anything about this. And that's when everyone started making the suggestion that we do this video. And then we'll talk about why we haven't covered the Garmin R10 yet, and if we're gonna cover the Garmin R10 in uh, the GSV studio. So radar accuracy, all right, measured by the radar. All right, it's saying that it's measuring this data. Club head speed, okay, so if you're looking for club head speed, it actually is a plus or minus three mile per hour measured data parameter. All right, so um, you'll have to make the decision if plus or minus three miles per hour is an acceptable range for you. For a $599 unit, based on other units that are in that space, it seems like kind of a, a you know acceptable range, plus or minus three miles per hour. You be the judge of that because the value really comes down to the end user. All right, so and that's why I said this is gonna be really fact-based, not opinion-based. Um, ball speed accuracy, plus or minus one mile per hour. That seems very realistic to me. Now, is that both for outdoor and indoor because it has that you know short eight feet of flight versus being able to read it in full flight? Um, I would think that it's picking up ball speed within that first couple feet. That's where it's most important because it's gonna lose ball speed after. So if it is able to do that within plus or minus one mile per hour, I think that's really good. Um, other units in this, you know, uh, 200 to let's call it $600 price range um, tend to be pretty accurate as far as ball speed goes. So I think you can expect this one to do the same for you. All right, launch angle accuracy. All right, the actual launch angle of the ball, plus or minus one degree. All right, now I think that's pretty realistic. Um, I think some might say that, you know, when you're talking about driver and a very long ball flight, all right, we all know that low uh, spin and high launch is gonna give you uh, optimal, you know, uh, distance with your driver. Is one degree gonna change that enough to where you're gonna see much different results out on the course versus what you'd see this if you're using it in a home environment like a golf simulator or hitting into a net. All right, so just understand that. And then launch direction accuracy. I think this is very similar. It's plus or minus one degree, but it's the same thing. If you launch it one degree to the right over a short period of time, it may not play that much of effect. But if it's one degree to the right over a long period of time, it's, it's you know coming offline much longer and longer and longer. All right, I think that a lot of people would agree that some of the high-end camera systems that are measuring that that you know angle precisely, um, you know those cameras are extremely expensive. And you know that's what they're trying to do is, is get a very precise measurement of the ball. Not an estimated number, um, but once again, they're saying they're measuring it, it's just it can only do it within you know, a range of accuracy. And it's cool that they're stating this. I think it's great that they're stating it. I mean, it, it's a little bit hidden, like I said, but the documentation's out there. Um, now, the interesting part is, is they've mentioned several times how they're using Club Path to come to the determination of data. What I found interesting was this, is that Club Path is not under measured data, but it's also not under calculated data. So um, now let's go under uh, uh, calculated by the algorithm data. So they're saying that the measured data that they're getting from the radar is going into the algorithm to come up with this data, such as club face angle accuracy, plus or minus two degrees. All right, so I think, and this is kind of, I guess, my opinion, but I think most would agree that plus or minus two degrees could be pretty significant. All right, where it's gonna change that ball direction. But if you were trying to work on stopping to come outside in with your club swing, all right, um, and you wanted to make sure that your face was um, not closed at impact or not open at impact, you know, you were working on your swing. That, that's, that's, that's what we'll just say. Um, I think that the plus or minus two degrees is at least gonna tell you if the face is open all the time or if the face is closed all the time, um, you know, and you're gonna have a gauge of it. So uh, if it can provide that, you know, calculated by the algorithm, I think it'd be doing a decent job. So especially, once again, at the $599 price range. 
everybody always you know comes out right away and says well how's it stack up against twenty thousand dollar you know unit or an eighteen thousand dollar unit or whatever it may be well it's a five hundred ninety nine dollar unit I mean I think we all understand that there's going to be these level of accuracies and you know expectations that you should have if you're purchasing this and that's why I'm sharing this with you you know no different than if you wanted putting or chipping um, you know well for five hundred ninety nine dollars you're not going to get it with this unit you know and that's just something you have to understand it's part of that value but let's go over the other calculated stuff apex height accuracy plus or minus five feet i don't think that's bad i mean i don't think most people are really going to say hey plus or minus five feet is making a huge world of difference um, so it's going to give you a good idea of your apex and then carry distance accuracy plus or minus five yards all right so Carry distance plus or minus five yards. I think there's going to be some, you know, golfers out there that may say, "Hey, I need to know, you know, a closer range of that plus or minus five yards." But if you're bag mapping and you're an average golfer and you're just trying to get a good gauge of your distances and it can do it plus or minus five yards, I think that's going to be very acceptable, especially at the $599 price range. Okay, so you have to ask yourself the question: if whatever level of golfer you are, if that's acceptable. But now let's go into something that's very important and hopefully you guys have stayed tuned to this part of the video because spin okay is not in here anywhere i would assume they would have put it under calculated because the reason that i know it's not being measured is that some of the top radar units in the industry like trackman okay or flight scope both use a metallic dot for anything in short range. And they do that so the radar can actually see the movement of the ball precisely. Now if it's outside, it can actually see the flight of the ball, it can see the curve of the ball, but that side angle or side spin of the ball is creating curve in the air, okay? And that's what's allowing it to give you the shot shape. And that shot shape can be affected by many different things, including what's called gear effect. Whether you're hitting a toe ball or a heel ball, all right, it really can play a huge effect on what that side spin ends up being for the ball. I'm not sure why they don't list it here. I'm assuming it's going to be calculated by the algorithm in some way, but I think you really need to understand, especially based on users that have emailed me, that you're going to get some inconsistent ball flight. And now I'm talking about indoor. Now, some have mentioned they're still getting it outdoor too. I don't know the distance it's reading the ball. I would have assumed, I don't know how strong this radar is, that it would have been reading it for a decent amount of distance where it could pick up on flight, but there have been some users that have reported that you know they're hitting fades and it's going straight or um, you know it's just ending up being a straight push, whatever it may be. It's not getting them the actual curvature that they should get from what they're seeing out at the range. So once again, Let's go back to the $599 price point. I think you have to understand that if you want that level of side spin accuracy, you really shouldn't be expecting it out of a $599 unit, all right? Now, is it doing a decent job? I've had quite a few users report that out in the range, they're getting decent ball curvature. There's misses in there. I mean, almost every person so far that's talked to me said, yeah, there's misses, but I also saw some that were you know, right on. And so they're getting a good gauge of what's going on. In the indoor environment, most people, what they've shared with me, have been that it's struggling a little bit with that side spin, which is going to be something very important to get a shot shape. So just understand that. Now, as far as GSV covering the Garmin R10, I'll give you guys kind of a full disclosure on what happened there. So I actually had communication with Garmin and they were gonna send a media unit out for us to test. And uh, we thought it was coming and kind of had more communication with them uh, upwards of like a few weeks ago, I wanna say is when it was, three or four weeks um, before they started shipping to customers and it sounded like they were still sending a unit out. So I didn't buy one because I thought one was coming. And uh, you know, I, it, one never came. I don't know what happened. <laughs> and I, I wasn't gonna push them to send one. That's not what GSV is all about. I mean, we kind of show things how it is. I'm never asking for free things or anything like that. I'm not reaching out to people, pushing them to send us stuff. If they wanna send one, great. Um, you know, We'll show it like we always do, uncut and straightforward. Um, but we haven't had a unit because of that. Will we buy one? It's possible. I just don't know if it fits the GSV needs or not. I've had some other units that are like two, three, four hundred dollar units that we've shown in the channel that have been given to me for whatever you know various reason, um, and they're cool units. I mean, for one hundred ninety nine dollars, you can get your distances, or whatever it may be. Um, will this be one that we show? I mean, you guys will have to stay tuned and see, but I'd love to hear what your guys' comments are and if you'd like to see it. You know, we maybe we'll uh, just go out and buy one just to kind of, you know, show you guys and provide this, you know, information to you guys if that's, uh, you guys would like for us to do that. 
we could do it. So, um, you know, as always, I just appreciate you guys watching. I love your feedback. So comment below, you know, let me know what you think. Let me know what you'd like to see. And I'd uh, love to provide it to you. So I hope this video has been very, you know, informative uh, to everyone that's been emailing, um, everyone that may uh, have emailed, you know, in the future. Maybe you don't have to now because you know all these details. I've been able to share them with you. And, uh, you know, it'd be really cool to see what's coming up in the future with people like Garmin kind of dabbling in this, uh, this space, you know, and, and lower priced units coming out, higher priced price units coming out. A lot of changes going on out there, so it's really cool to see. I think it's going to be an exciting fall and winter season coming up, and I'll be sure to share everything with you guys as more develops in the space. So, um, as always, thanks a lot for watching. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't had a chance. Comment below what you think, and we'll talk to you guys soon.